Hey everyone, it's February and January was super busy, but I've been busy working on my Blythe swap for the Blythe Swappin' Group, and this is the Valentine's Day swap. So I figured I would show you guys what I made because last last month, at least for the Christmas one, I didn't show you the items on camera, but I included photos, which I feel like is not the same. So I figured since I am packaging this up, I'll show you the final result as well as some of the wrapping I'll be doing. And I'll get it off to my friend Carrie, and then we'll upload this video. So here is the main outfit that I made her. And I used a box that I upcycled, and I decorated it with various, you know, motifs and embellished it. Um, the cutout I had on hand, I actually cut it out because I used to have like a heart wall. But then um, I also um, had some doilies, and these are some printouts that I got online. I decided to make a little collage because I love collages and have a lot of supplies and I figured it'd be nice to keep the outfit in a box like this or so I think <laughs> I think it makes the gift feel a little bit nicer so I did all that and I added um, some washi tape of course on the outside and there is some upcycled tissue paper so this is pretty much the outfit and as you can see it has an apron and I'll go through all the components but you know I might just do that instead so Carrie and I tend to have some similar tastes, although she doesn't really go for any modern streetwear, but she likes a lot more of the romantic, vintage -y styles. And I'm not big on the garish Valentine's Day print <laughs> prints, despite the packaging, but I think it has like a vintage charm, right? But I wanted to make something soft and romantic. And the first thing I made wasn't exactly something I felt very inspired by. So I'll include a photo of my doll wearing the item and I sent her that dress as well, but it was hard for me to think of a collection that was cohesive with multiple components that I would be proud to send out to somebody. So after talking to my friend Karen, who goes by Sparks Twilight on Instagram, I'll include her info down below and hopefully I remember all of this, but she and I talked for a bit and she definitely gave me some good inspiration, which led to this set coming into creation. And I'm really grateful for that because I was feeling a little bit, I don't know, when things don't work out, I tend to dread a lot about the swaps that I make or just creating in general. So when it worked so when it worked out well, I was able to quickly put something together and I actually felt excited about doing it. So let me show you what ended up happening. First off, I guess I'll talk about the camera, but there is a 3D STL file that is on Thingiverse. It's made by Makey's, which they used to print 3D dolls, but they got acquired by some company. I think it was Disney. And then afterwards, you know, nothing ever happened, but they still have a bunch of STL. So I'll, I'll link that and include it below. But what I ended up doing was printing out this camera, and then I added components like some metallic hardware, as you can see here so that it can be easily strapped around the Blythe neck. As you can see, it unhooks. And I ended up aging the, I guess, the little metal parts here with some foil, and some of it wore away, but it's fine because, you know, it gives a vintage charm, so I tell myself. And I added a little bit of embellishment, like a stud here, and then it has a leather strap. And it's not exactly symmetrical due to the fact that there is a clasp, but I like it. And I guess in the future I could add some um, gold jump rings, but I like the asymmetrical feel too. I don't know. I think it adds charm. That's my, that's my answer for everything. It adds charm. So we have that. I painted some details as well. You can see the lens is black. And then we have some socks. I guess I'll go in the order that I put them in. And these are just simple knit socks with a zigzag st stitch at the top so that the stitches don't pop when they're put on a doll. And then we have an apron. So the base pattern for this is in the Hanon book version two. And actually I have it up here. So let me quickly pull and show you on camera. And I also did a flip through of this book, but it's from this book. And the pattern is the apron dress. I modified it, not that much, but oh, I dropped it <laughs> on the floor, kind of slid down. But I ended up adding a hand embroidery, chain stitch, as well as some back stitch B. 
And then this applique here was my favorite like lace trim. And I think I have some over here. It's amazing how I managed to not put stuff away, but I know where everything is. So it's usually just like this trim that I usually cut down to size. And then I embellish a bunch of the items that I make with it. I love it. I love the scale of it. It's a great color. And it has like a nice soft like romantic feel to it. And it closes on the back with a snap. And then I always finish my waistbands with a whip stitch. Top stitching, I'm kind of iffy about because sometimes I just don't like how it looks on the top. But you could like stitch in the ditch if you wanted. But I just, I'm never really super happy with that result. And I prefer, you know, just hand finishing stuff. It's I enjoy it. I like hand sewing. And for me, the most enjoyable part is doing the hand sewing once I'm done completing most of the garments. So this is a white cotton wall dress that I added trim on and even though this is pretty simple <laughs> this took so long to make because it's just so much gathering and it's like light and fluffy and with the trim as you can see here I made sure that I sewed it, sewed it close to the edge and then flipped it over and I did want to do some top stitching on that because I like how it looks on things like this so we have this dress and then this is one of my favorite patterns and I included it in my last swap to Cheryl, but I love how quickly this comes together. It sews really well. And here is a wool blend felt that I had on hand. And I like how distressed it looks. It reminds me of, you know, moss, mossy green colors, different tones and variations because I think there was some fading with it, but then over time, you know, I had it like in a room and unfortunately moths got to it, but I've since washed it, cleaned everything up. And I just like the texture and worn and feel that this fabric has now. So it's one of my favorites. <laughs> I thought it looked really nice with the color palette. So we have that. And then last but not least, we have a little beret. So I added a pom-pom trim to it. And then I sewed it together. So it'll have like a nice little, I guess like fold here, has a little bit of height here. And then I wool felted, but I actually use alpaca, not wool. Um, I use some alpaca fiber that I had excess clean, but it's clean waste from my wig making. And I felted it onto the hat. So I think it adds some character. And I think I mentioned it was all wool blend felt that I use. So we have that. And then I just included a little note card with some information about the outfit and the set that I made. I usually try to include that because... I don't know, like I feel like I put a lot of time and effort into my pieces that I think most people would like to know, or I mean, I like to know, so I include that as well. And Carrie's mentioned before that she loves all the little notes I include in my packages to her, so I figured I would do that with this one. So I'm put this all back in neatly, and let me fold it, and then we can put a bow on this. Oops, this way. So I was really, really pleased with how that turned out because it was not going very well in the beginning. So I was going to tie this off with a ribbon, but I might have to go and get that because I left it outside, so that's fine. So I'll put that off to the side for now. I also made these little Valentine's Day, I don't know what to call them, little bobble critters. I bought this kit like a few years back, but I really, really thought it was precious and adorable. Because it reminded me of when we would get these in our Valentine's Day boxes when I was a kid. And then they would have like little ribbon tags that say, be my Valentine or something cute like that. So it was a little craft kit and I used like hot glue to, you know, assemble it because it drives quickly and it's hot and it's pretty sturdy for, you know, purposes like these. So I included these three and I'll put them there for now. And then I also had some printables. So I bought these from an online Etsy seller. I made these printouts and... You can see that there's many pages and since this is like a cutout book I wanted to assemble it together so it did look like a proper you know thing that you could cut out valentines from and send it to like you know your friends even though I doubt Carrie will actually be cutting anything out of this it's more like a prop so there's two of these books make your own valentines and then I had some magazines that I put together and these, I did glue the pages back and forth, so some of them, I guess. Oh, did I not? Okay. I didn't glue them because I was like, oh, they're cutouts. Okay. So I just don't remember. It's <laughs> It's been a busy couple of days. So I did that with these. 
This is really cute stuff that they have on the Etsy shop. Okay, so the paper dolls, I guess I didn't do that with, but over here, maybe? I glued some pages back. Okay, so I had some foresight with this one, but not this one, but I think it still works. It's still cute. So it's like a little magazine. And then we have this one as well. Same feel. Very, very cute. And I bought it from um, this, the Etsy shop, which I will include below because I think this is such a big portion of the video. Um, not a big portion, but a good enough portion that I'll remember. But it was $4.99 for the entire set of printouts, which is a great deal. And I think it'll come in handy for future you know, swaps that I do. And she had like a paper doll kit as well. So I figured I'd print that out. You can see different pages. So I figured I'd make it look like, you know, a real paper doll box set. And then last but not least, I decorated this box with the various doilies that were included in the printable and decorated some glitter. Kind of like the boxes of the box for Valentine's Day you made when you were a kid. And then there's some excess little Valentine's Day so Valentine's, so I cut them out and put them in here. So these will go in a little bag. And I realize these bags are cute, but they're like not that great because the gold flakes off everywhere. So I like how the packaging looks. So I'm going to leave it as such, but sorry for the flaking, Carrie. I didn't want to put it in the box because I'm like, I like, I like the overall effect it gives. So let me put this in here. And then we'll put in the magazines. And then I'll add the little box. As well as this. So hopefully Carrie's dolls will love this little package of printables and miniatures. And then we have just some cards that I made. Well, a card that I made. I like making collages if you couldn't tell. <laughs> so, oh, I forgot to say, I actually made this, this paper clay and resin heart too. And these were just some random like capuchons that I bought on Etsy. But here's another collage card. And... Carrie mentioned she liked kitty, so I included a kitty cat on this one. Bow. Here is the postcard. It's like Valentine's Day greeting. And then I also included. Oh, oops. I have another magazine here. So I'll pop that in to the bag on the camera. But here's the Valentine's Day that I wrote a note to her on. And I got this a few years back, but I don't have a lot of people to mail like note cards and cards to. And usually it's not just that, but like when I do remember, it's like much too late and I totally forget. So I have some extras, but this was actually a Martha Stewart Valentine's Day kit. And I wish they still made and carried her branded stuff at Michael's because it was really good. It was really elegant and pretty. And I loved picking up all the little like Halloween, Valentine's Day, Christmas stuff that she had, but they just, I guess they, they axed it or they're just not doing it anymore. So here's a little paper airplane and sorry, I'm sh the tripod's kind of shaky. It's not the best layout that I have going on here. Um, and then you can just put it in here. So I'll fumble that off camera, but I'll probably attach it with um, the last item that I'll show you. And it's this. So I made this entire like printed matchbox and it took way longer than it should have because <laughs> It didn't print correctly when I used this box generator, but I was able to at least print the bottom, get most of like the, the slide tray part, and then like taped it together to get a pattern out of it. But it did come together in the end. And as you can see, I also embellished it and made, um, put some decorations on it. I used like three dimensional um, puffy stickers to give it some dimension. And it slides open. And this one is a bunch of 3D printed items that I made for Carrie. I like to send hangers now with that clothes that I make because hangers print out relatively quickly. I have the STL like perfected with the filament that I use. So it's easy for me to print them out. And I included a dozen of them, which I, you know, used washi tape to keep together. And then I printed out this cat. And I'm really happy with how it turned out because the first one was a little bit smaller. 
And I know it looks a little bit big, but why does like a weird one six proportion doll because her head is so huge. But I compared this cat to me and my cat and it looked close enough. So hopefully she's okay with that because I know there's like a proper scale and it just, I don't know, the math just seems like a lot of work, but I was happy with this. Hopefully she will be happy with it too. And then also there was an STL that Jennifer sent me that I printed out these a while ago. And then I also filled them out with like a resin. So you can't see under this light, but maybe if I turn on the overhead lamp, can you see it a little bit more? But mm, probably not. It's not showing up right now. But there is like resin with like green shimmer in it. So it works well for Halloween. And of course I included a little note card too. So we'll package that up. That back here. A little kitty cat. So yeah, the one I initially printed was like way smaller and I painted the eyes for like two hours total because I kept wiping it and it just looked awful. So I decided I'll just reprint it because I couldn't save the initial one and then I liked the size better. So it's like a nice, big, hefty, muscular cat. And the painting went by very quickly. I'm still very new to that and I don't have the right brushes and all that, which I think is probably making it so complicated. But let me slide this back in and then that's pretty much it. So this is what I'm sending off to Carrie. I'll include some photos at the end. I'm going to finish wrapping it up, but my camera, my filming situation right now, I don't have as much space or memory on anything that I own, but you can see pretty much what I'm going to be sending her. Let me pop this one back in here. Let's tie that off so they don't fall out. And then this card. And that's what we made for our Valentine's Day swap. So thank you so much for watching. And if you have any questions or any comments about any of the stuff that I made, I will be more than happy to answer them. I hope to have more videos this month. Um, I've been busy with my ball jointed dolls too. So this is pretty much it for now. And I'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Bye and have a happy Valentine's Day.